y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about my most recent experience backpacking with a hammock. Several years back, I made a video that turned into probably one of the most controversial videos that's on this channel, and that was addressing why I had switched from a hammock to a tent during my through hike of the Appalachian Trail. And a lot of people said that I didn't give hammocking a fair shake and that I didn't have a proper hammock set up and they were probably right about both of those things. So I decided on my recent through hike of the Pinhoti Trail to dedicate approximately the last 100 miles or so of the trail to retesting out a hammock setup. So today I wanna to talk about the different points that I consider when trying to decide between a hammock and a tent, and hopefully that'll help some of you if you're trying to decide which one is right for you. And I'll also go over why I still personally prefer a tent to a hammock. One of the first considerations I have in mind when selecting a shelter is ease of setup, because after a long day of backpacking, I don't wanna spend a ton of time setting up whatever I'm sleeping in that night. So. In that aspect, tenting definitely takes the cake for me. And I understand I have more experience tenting, but in particular, the types of tents that I prefer when I'm backpacking, single wall tents like the Z-Pax Duplex that sets up with a handful of stakes and two trekking poles, I can have up in two minutes or less. Whereas in the world of hammocking, especially in three season weather and colder temperatures like I was just in, you've got the hammock itself, You've got the suspension system, the tarp, then you've got to stake out all of that stuff. Maybe you have an underquilt because it's colder temperatures. So there are just a lot more things to consider and kind of fiddle with with setting up a hammock than the tents that I typically use. Now, if you're looking at a tent comparison that's a double walled tent where you've got the body of the tent, the rain fly, the separate, tent poles, then you might have a bit more of an equal comparison there between the tent and the hammock setup. It really just depends on the type of setup you prefer. And of course, whichever one you decide on, you're going to get more efficient with the setup. But I still challenge any hammocker that's up for it a race with me setting up my duplex and them their hammock setup. Now let's talk about comfort of sleep. In this instance, I really do think that team hammock has the win because there are a lot of people who weren't able to backpack anymore maybe due to back problems or just not being able to climb in and out of a tent or they just didn't want to anymore that have found a really comfortable sleep and a way to actually get out and backpack again due to hammocking and the technology that's improved over the years with that. From my personal experience with tenting, even though I have the best of the best sleeping pad that I can find, and I've experimented with different camping pillows, I just find myself waking up every couple of hours or so and having to shift. And even though I have an inflatable sleeping pad now, I still find that sometimes I have my hip going numb or worse, it's in pain. But I found that with my most recent hammocking trip, I slept very comfortably. And once I was able to kind of dial in and find a way to make sure I stayed warm while I was backpacking and sleeping in a hammock, that was just a complete game changer. So I definitely think that no matter what setup I've had with tenting, I've slept more comfortably in the hammock. And the hammock isn't just more comfortable in sleep, but also while you're lounging around in camp. It's nice to have something to sit on to kind of remove those pressure points of sitting on a log or laying on the ground, uh, just to be able to kind of kick back elevate your feet if you want to. I mean, all in all, the hammock is just more comfortable to be in. And I know I've probably spent more nights than not surfing across the floor of my tent because I'm not on perfectly level ground. So with a hammock, that's just not something you have to worry about. On the Pinhoti Trail, I think I would have slept much more comfortably without the sleeping pad, although it wasn't really uncomfortable or anything like that. But we pack our fears, and one of the things that I was worried about was one, not being able to set the hammock up properly, whether that was because of my own failures or because I couldn't find trees that were properly spaced. And I didn't want to be stranded sleeping on the ground in 20 something degree weather with no sleeping pad. Second, I was a little worried that I would be too cold at night without it. 
Originally, when I selected this setup, I intended to be backpacking in March or October when the temperatures would be a little bit more mild and not in the heart of winter here in the south when the temperatures are in the 20s. So anyway, another option, if I had known that I was going to be camping in December or January, I would have probably gone with a lower rated underquilt, so 10 degrees, 0 degrees, and one that was longer, so that would span from end to end on the hammock instead of the short Yeti. And not only is there the consideration of comfort and sleep, but also in entering and exiting your shelter. When I'm climbing in and out of my tent, I feel like a dog getting in and out of a crate and I'm groaning and just, you know, kind of grumpy, whatever. Uh, sore from hiking and it just doesn't really go well with having to enter my little den and also exit it. I dread getting up to go pee in the middle of the night, etc. But with the hammock, I found that I was a bit more ready to kind of get up and at them in the morning, probably because I slept better, but also because it's just a more comfortable experience in general. You're able to go from a lying position to a sitting position and standing. It's just not as much of a struggle in general. I also found that I was more apt to get out of the hammock earlier in the morning. I am not so great at getting up early and getting out and, and starting backpacking that I always regret it later in the day and end up night hiking. So anyway, I just found that in the mornings when I went from that lying position to then sitting up, it kind of got my blood flowing and I was a bit more eager to get up and get going in the mornings. Something else to think about is campsite selection. It really depends on the area that you'll be backpacking. If I'm going backpacking in a desertous area that I know doesn't have any trees, well then it doesn't really make sense to take a hammock. But if I'm going backpacking in an area that I know is going to have a lot of uneven terrain and it's going to be very rocky, then it may not make sense to take a tent. So it's definitely something to think about, but you can have limitations with either one. I know a lot of people uh, seem to think that, well, with a hammock, as long as there's trees, you're going to find the perfect setup and you'll be fine. But I did have a night on the Pinhoti Trail where there were a lot of trees around, but it was a very brushy, grown up kind of area. So there were a lot of obstacles to try to hang the hammock through and the trees just didn't seem to be the right length apart. So I ended up with two trees that were a little bit closer together than they should have been. I made it work and I still slept much more comfortably than if I was just making it work on some sloped ground with a tent. But what I'm saying is there can definitely be limitations either way. The next thing that I take into account is making breakfast. And that's really more of a personal preference. I guess all of these can be. But something that I almost require, especially if I'm going to be backpacking in cooler temperatures, is having a way to cook while I'm comfortable and warm. I don't want to get out of my tent in the morning and make breakfast. I don't want to get out of my hammock in the morning and make breakfast. So that was something that I was concerned would be more of a limiting factor in the hammock just because I didn't know how to make it work. But after this experience hammock camping, I found a way that if I'm low enough to the ground and I can sit up in the hammock and put my feet down on the ground and set my food pot and everything up there beside me, then I can just sit in the hammock while I'm in my sleeping bag and cook me some breakfast. So I'm able to stay warm, stay out of the elements if it's raining, etc. And again, because of that process of having to sit up and lean over and cook, it just kind of got me up and moving and out of camp a little bit earlier in the mornings. Something else to consider is your privacy or separation from nature. For me personally, I prefer to have my little den, home away from home, whatever you want to call it, that gives me that false sense of security and that separation from everything outside of it. And I like that especially when I'm camping with other people. I like to not have to worry about changing my clothes and somebody seeing the moon and the stars and everything else. Uh, also, I like to just kind of be able to spread all of my stuff out and look at everything. I've got places where everything goes in my tent so I can find something at all times. With hammocking, I, it's not as easy to change clothes. So you're either just up under your tarp and hoping nobody's seeing you um, and, and you change your clothes under there or you can lie in the hammock and change your clothes, but it's not 
as easy, at least it wasn't for me, changing my clothes, lying in the hammock as when I'm in my tent. Also, I wasn't able to spread everything about in the hammock. I did have a little shelf area where I could put some items, but mainly I had to still keep some things in my pack and hung that on the suspension for my hammock so I could still access those things. It just wasn't quite as easily. And maybe that's not a big deal for some people, but that is something that's kind of a make it or break it type thing for me. On the topic of privacy though is also how much you wanna be separated from nature. For myself, that's not such a huge thing, but if you really like to kind of be in nature while you're camping too, then you might prefer the hammock over the tent because with the hammock, you're in the hammock and you can choose to not have your tarp up so you can look at the stars while you're sleeping at night and maybe hear the noises a little bit better and just kind of feel more one with nature than if you're in the closed walls of a tent. But this also kind of takes into play whether you're considering a single wall tent or a double wall tent because if you've got the separate rain fly, you can always remove that and be in a tent but also still kind of be more a part of nature as you sleep. So it really just boils down to your personal preferences and, and whether you value being in nature more or having a bit more privacy. Another important consideration is the weather and what you would rather weather the weather in. It did rain on me one of the nights and one of the mornings while I was in the hammock setup, so I didn't get a ton of experience with that, but it actually went a lot better than I had expected. I was able to pack everything up just fine and not get myself soaked or my stuff soaked. And actually it was less muddy and gross packing up the hammock than what I've experienced with the tent because that's directly on the ground and you're getting the splatter from the ground onto the tent. Uh, but just the whole dealing with the stuff spread out while it's raining and cooking under the tarp while it's raining, I really do prefer having that more enclosed and protected feeling of the tent in those conditions. I'm not sure that it really makes a huge difference. I do think that if I was in a nasty storm, I would also prefer the tent versus the hammock setup just because I feel a bit more secure. But I have had some bad experiences in tents, so it's not like they are bulletproof to the weather or anything like that. But it is something to keep in mind and try to figure out what you individually would be more comfortable experiencing bad weather in. Next, let's cover weight and press. Now, of course, it's gonna be one of those it depends answers because it can vary wildly. You could get a tent and hammock set up for probably both around 100-ish dollars, and you could also spend several hundred dollars on these different setups. But if I'm comparing the current three season weather setup for a tent that I would typically carry to the hammock setup that I took on the Penhody Trail and was in, you know, in 20 something degree temperatures, then I'm comparing the Z-Pax Duplex, which weighs just over 19 ounces to the War Bonnet Blackbird setup with the Yeti underquilt and the suspension system I had, all of that stuff comes out to two pounds, 13.81 ounces. And actually the one that I had weighed a bit more because there was a little bit of a mix up when I ordered from War Bonnet. I ordered the single layer hammock, but I actually ended up with a double layer hammock. So it's probably a bit heavier than that. Uh, but anyway, so that is a significant difference. And for somebody like me who takes a lot of extra camera equipment to record, then I'm trying to cut edges anywhere I can. So that weight difference is really too big to ignore for me. Now for the price points of the tent versus the hammock, for the Z-Pax duplex I have, it costs $599. And the hammock setup that I took with me out on the Penhody Trail was $565. So you're looking at a difference of about $34 for those two different shelters. When I picked out my hammock setup, I wanted a one-stop shop type experience because as a beginner, there's a lot of information out there and knowing exactly how to piecemeal different components of a hammock setup from different companies, it just seemed like too much. So I looked at the Warbonnet website and tried to pick out components that 
would create the most lightweight setup that were still functional for what I wanted to do. But if I'm gonna compare weights between hammocks and tents, I think it's only fair that I look into taking different components of a hammock setup from different companies to try to create a much more lightweight setup. So let's look at a hypothetical hammock setup. And I might actually consider buying this and then testing it out in the future. But first things first, if I were to get the single hammock from Hummingbird Hammocks, it costs $65 and weighs 5.2 ounces. If I paired that with the Warbler bug net, that's hard to say, Warbler, also from Hummingbird Hammocks, then that would add on an additional eight ounces for $40. Then you need a suspension setup. So the hammock tree straps from Hummingbird weigh 1.55 ounces and cost $30. I would probably select the Z-Pax hammock tarp, which weighs seven ounces and costs $249. That tarp doesn't come with guy line. So for a hundred feet of the lightest slack line from Z-Pax, it would cost $26 for an additional 1.5 ounces. And then for three season weather, of course, I would need an under quilt. So let's just say, I'm going in the more mild temperatures of March to October, maybe even beginning of November, then I think my Yeti underquilt would work just fine. That weighs 8.25 ounces and costs $200. So for a three season setup with all of those different components, it would weigh 31.5 ounces and cost $610. If you were backpacking in the summer when it's hot and you could maybe do without the underquilt, then that would be 23.25 ounces for the setup and a cost of $410. Just a side note, I have heard that these more lightweight hammocks like the Hummingbird, for example, might not be as comfortable as a larger hammock that has more bells and whistles like the Warbonnet hammock that I have that's got the shelf on the side, but there are always trade-offs. So if you want the most lightweight setup that you can get, you're probably gonna have to give on some of that stuff. If I were to compare this to the duplex, it would be 19.4 ounces for $599, but I'd really need to add on the weight of a sleeping pad if I'm gonna be fair about everything, because I would say most people who backpack with a hammock probably don't bring a sleeping pad because they've got their under quilt. So with the Z-Pax duplex setup, with the sleeping pad that I tend to use, the NeoAir X-Lite Short from Thermarest, that weighs eight ounces and costs about $175. But for the total duplex with the sleeping pad, that would weigh 27.4 ounces and cost a total of $775. But if we're really getting down to the nitty gritty as far as a lightweight tent versus a lightweight hammock setup, then I think it's only fair to compare a one person tent because the hammock setup is only a one person setup. You don't have a ton of extra space. So for that, I would get the Z-Pax Plexamid one person tent. It weighs 15.3 ounces, so just under a pound and costs $550. But of course, adding that sleeping pad into it, that would bring us to 23.3 ounces for $725. So just to summarize everything, cause I know that that was a lot. If you're looking at a three season setup with the hammock lightweight setup, versus the tent lightweight setup, then the tent wins in the weight category by being 8.1 ounces lighter, but it costs $115 more. If you're looking at strictly a summer setup, so no under quilt with the hammock, that wouldn't work for a long through hike like the Appalachian Trail, Pacific Crest Trail, Continental Divide Trail, et cetera. But if you're section hiking and you're going hiking in the summer, then the lightweight tent setup is actually 0.05 ounces more than the hammock setup and it would cost $315 more. So if you're somebody who's only gonna go backpacking in the hot summer months and you're not a cold sleeper and you think you could get by without that under quilt, then you know what, a hammock might be the way to go for you. All in all, I definitely had a much more pleasant experience hammocking on the Pinhoti Trail than I did on the Appalachian Trail. And that's probably for several reasons. One being because I did more research this time. Two, I definitely invested more money into my setup. 
the first time I used a borrowed ENO hammock and made the bug net and the tarp at home and it ended up weighing a little bit over four pounds for the whole shebang and I didn't even have an under quilt. So um, this setup definitely worked out much better for colder temperatures. Uh, not so much for the wallet, but you know, there are always trade-offs. Also, everything was a bit overwhelming for me when I started my through hike of the AT because it was my first backpacking experience ever. So it's kind of like trying to drink from a fire hose just to take it all in. So I think I would have been better served if, well, one, I had had more backpacking experience prior to hiking the AT. Uh, but if I had just gone with something familiar and then maybe later tried to transition into hammocking. So while I was out on the Penhody Trail, none of that stuff was new. I mean, I'm familiar now with cooking on a backpacking stove and filtering water, et cetera. So adding in a new component like a different shelter isn't as scary and overwhelming. But all in all, for my personal hiking style and the things that I prioritize while I'm backpacking, I still, prefer a tent and I think it's probably going to stay that way forever uh, no matter how much more time I put into hammocking but I'm not saying that I would never hammock in the future in fact I'm thinking about testing out another hammock setup later this summer on a shorter hike and there would be some instances where maybe I would prefer a hammock over a tent for example if I was going on a section hike or a shorter backpacking trip and I could plan for good weather so it's not on an experience like a through hike where you're just out there rain or shine kind of no matter what mother nature brings you i like the security of a tent for that reason also if i was going to be doing more lounging around in camp so maybe if i was going to be doing shorter days then something like a hammock would be more enjoyable because again you get to just sit down and chill out and it's more comfortable and you do get a better night's sleep. Or if I go on a backpacking trip where I'm not vlogging and I don't have all of the weight of the extra camera gear so I can splurge a bit more on my shelter to make sure that I'm getting a more comfortable and good night's sleep, then that would be a time where I would carry a hammock. But it all really boils down to personal preference and the tent just seems to work best for me and for what I'm doing and for what I prefer. But for you, again, some of these points you might feel completely different about, and that's okay because variety is the spice of life. And if we all agreed on everything, then the world would be a very boring place. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today. I hope that if you're on the fence between a tent and a hammock as your shelter, maybe this has kind of helped clear things up for you a bit. And if you already know that you are for sure team tent or team hammock, then I'd love to hear why in the comments below. Why have you chosen that specific shelter and why does it work best for you? Thanks again and we'll see y'all next time.